starting with this vividly toned 1962 Washington Quarter. Graded as MS-67 by PCGS and endorsed by CAC. According to Stax Bowers, a vibrant satin finish blankets both sides, the details of which are fully rendered from a razor-sharp strike. Beautifully toned, as well, rich midnight blue and steel gray iridescence is largely confined to the peripheries. It was sold for $2,232.50. Here is, 1952 Franklin Half Dollar with Full Bell Lines. Graded as MS-67 FBL by NGC. Fiery red-orange, violet-red, green, and russet toning covers the reverse, and smaller amounts occur near the obverse borders. Fully struck with intense, shimmering mint luster and distraction-free surfaces. It was sold for $3,818.75. Next up. 1942s Washington Quarter. Graded as MS-68 by PCGS. A breathtakingly beautiful superb gem that stands at the threshold of numismatic perfection. Silky smooth in texture with billowy mint luster, both sides exhibit a delightful satin to softly frosted finish. The reverse is untoned apart from subtle golden peripheral highlights, while the similar appearing obverse exhibits halos of bolder and more varied toning around the border. It ended up selling for $7,637.50. This is 2000p Sacagawea dollar struck on an Anthony dollar planchet. Graded as MS-68 by NGC. An outstanding gem example of this transitional error, created when one of the planchets intended for a 1999 Susan B. Anthony dollar got mixed into the planchets being fed into the presses striking Sacagawea dollars. These issues are known to have been in production simultaneously in late 1999. The surfaces are bright, fully brilliant and highly lustrous, with a very faint satin texture. Some faint swirling dye finishing lines appear as hairlines on the reverse, but are as made and are not to be confused with any type of handling. Fabulous cartwheels, essentially no marks and superb eye appeal. It ended up selling for $9,987.50. A splendid gem. 1943 Lincoln cent struck on a silver dime planchet. Fully brilliant and sharply struck on all but the extreme edge of the coin where the smaller dime planchet was stretched nearly to the width of the Lincoln cent by the force of the dies. Blazing white and lustrous with no signs of toning. The strike is so sharp even the VDB on Lincoln's shoulder is clear, a feature often lacking on normal 1943 cents on steel planchets. Of course all 1943 mint errors have a sort of magical appeal because of the fame of the 1943 cent struck on regular copper planchets, of which only a modest number exist. This highly sought-after error cent was sold for $10,575. Next. 1859 Indian cent with deep obverse die cap mint error. Undoubtedly unique and of incredible quality for such an important, early mint error. First off, this is a single-year type coin and the first year of the Indian cent design as a small shield was added to the reverse design beginning in 1860 and the wreath was changed to an oak wreath with open style while the 1859 reverse is only an open laurel wreath with one cent at the center. This single planchet somehow stuck to the obverse die and was struck multiple times pushing the outer rim of the planchet up around the die and forming a die cap, with the obverse boldly struck of course. This MS-64 gem was sold for $30,550. And the last one. 1913 Lincoln cent graded as MS-67 read by PCGS. Struck with depth and precision on all the devices and lettering, and free of carbon spots or bag marks of any significance. Glorious bright mint red spans the obverse and reverse, and the eye appeal is strong in every possible category. It fetched a sum of $19,975. That's wraps up today's episode. Thanks for watching this video. Please make sure to smash subscribe and notification buttons below to help us grow and reach more numismatic enthusiasts on YouTube. God's willing, see you in the next episode.